Welcome to another learning episode. This chapter, we are going to talk about writing chapter 5 or writing the summary, conclusions, and recommendations of your research. Let's start with the summary of findings. There should be a brief statement about, first, the main purpose of the study. Another is the population of respondents, the period of the study, method of research used, the research instrument, and the sampling design. The findings may be lumped up all together, but clarity demands that each specific questions under the statement of the problem must be written first to be followed by the findings. The findings should be textual generalization that is a summary of the important data consisting of text and numbers. Take note, only the important findings, the highlights of the data, should be included in the summary. Findings are not explained or elaborated upon anymore. No new data should be introduced in the summary of findings. Now, let's discuss conclusions. Research conclusions are inferences, deductions, abstractions, implications, interpretations, general statement, and or generalization based upon the findings. Conclusions should appropriately answer the specific questions raised at the beginning of the investigation in order they are given under the statement of the problem. Conclusions should point out what were factually learned from the inquiry. No conclusion should be drawn from the implied or indirect effect of the findings. The conclusion should be based upon the responses to the question. Conclusions should be formulated concisely, that is brief and short. Without any strong evidence to the contrary, conclusions should be stated categorically. Conclusions should refer only to the population or area or subject of the study and take note conclusions should not be repetitions of any statement anywhere on your research paper here are some dangers to avoid or precautions that you need to avoid during drawing up conclusions based on the data that you have collected number one avoid being biased a respondent to a questioner may commit bias to protect his own interest. So do not be biased. Second is incorrect generalization. An incorrect generalization is made when there is a limited body of information or when the sample is not representative of the entire population. Another danger is incorrect comparison. A basic error is the statistical work is when you compare. Another that you have to avoid is the limited of information being furnished. Avoid as much as possible making conclusions not sufficiently and adequately supported by facts. Now, here are the guidelines in writing recommendations. Recommendations should aim to solve or help solve problems discovered in the investigation. Another is, no recommendation should be made for a problem or anything for that matter that has not been discovered or discussed in the study. There may also be recommendations for the continuance of a good practice or system or even recommendation for its improvement. Recommendations should aim for the ideal, but they must be feasible, practical, and attainable. It is useless to recommend something that is impossible. Recommendations should be logical and valid. 
For example, if the problem is the lack of facilities, it is only logical to recommend for the acquisition of the lacking facilities. Recommendation should be addressed to the person or entities or agency or office who or which is in position to implement them. For example, the general manager of the business or the human resource manager or it could be the owner of the business entity itself. There should be a recommendation for further research on the same topic on other places to verify, amplify, or negate the findings of the study. I hope you learned something on writing chapter 5 or the summary conclusions and recommendations of your research. Check more of my videos with regards to research writing. Thank you and hope you learned something and enjoy learning.